Alrighty, so we'll get started here. And as more people pop on, we'll invite them in. So happy Friday, everybody. Thank you all so much for joining us this afternoon. We are super excited to be hosting this webinar. And if you are looking to take your skin health to the next level, you are in the right place. And we've got a ton of great information to share with you. Um, I'm Olivia with Ethos Integrative Medicine. I'll be moderating this webinar. Before we start, please remember to mute your microphones. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to type them into the chat. We will be sure to answer them at the end. Um, and if you have any specific questions pertaining to your personal care, um, we cannot address that in our webinar, but I highly recommend scheduling an aesthetics consultation with Dr. Alexandra Mayer. She'll be able to answer your questions and um, help you to navigate treatment options. So I'll go over more information about this at the end, so stay tuned. Um, I'd like to start off our webinar by introducing our medical aesthetics expert and women's hormone specialist, Dr. Alexandra Mayer. Um, her biggest drive is to help her patients show up as the best version of themselves. Um, her approach to aesthetics is a skin first approach designed to balance immediate improvement with long term results. At Ethos Integrative Medicine, she takes her skin forward approach and applies it to aesthetic treatments that treat skin laxity, fine lines and wrinkles, acne, rosacea, and hyperpigmentation. And she knows that hormones can play a huge role in looking and feeling your best and also helps patients get their hormones balanced and their energy back. Um, we're super excited to have Dr. Alex Mayer host this webinar, and I hope you all get the chance to connect with her. as She's a fantastic resource um, for all things hormones, aesthetics, and skincare. So without further ado, I'll let her get started with her presentation. Thank you so much, Olivia, for that introduction. All right, I'm going to just share my screen, and then we'll get started. Okay, so first of all, thank you for um, joining us on this webinar. Um, I am really excited and passionate about this topic, and I'm really, really excited to share it with you. So I titled my presentation, My Skin Looks the Best Ever, and I titled it this for a reason. So um, Olivia mentioned our skin first approach. I see a lot of clinics and I get a lot of patients from a lot of clinics where they are very injection heavy. Um, I think injections are a fantastic part of a treatment plan, and I do injections all the time. I really, really love them. But if that is the only facet of your treatment plan, oftentimes patients find that they end up chasing something and they end up going down a path where at the end, they're not very happy. And that's because there's so many aspects to take into consideration with your skin. Um, we're going to go over all of this. But so for me, I want my patients to be able to show up as the best version of themselves. I want them to feel confident and beautiful um, and to feel like they feel amazing. Um, and so when I have patients going out with their friends, the biggest compliment that I can get in my office is when patients come back and they're like, oh my God, I went out with my girlfriends for brunch and they were asking me, what did you, what have you done to your skin? It looks amazing. Um, that is what we're looking for. We're looking for, oh my God, what have you been doing? This is so different than what have you had done? They are totally two completely different questions. And what we want is that beauty that shows up where you look like just the best version of yourself, where nobody knows you had anything done, but you look fantastic. So a little bit about me. I grew up in the world of aesthetics. Um, my aunt owned a spa when I was growing up. I have used good skincare my entire life. And despite the fact that you wouldn't actually see it in my skin, my skin's very acne prone. Um, it's very congested. <clears throat> and because it's so light um, and, and um, it's, it's got a light Fitzpatrick, I tend to hyperpigment a lot, which means that a lot of the things that my patients struggle with, I struggle with. And I am the world's fussiest person when it comes to skincare and skincare treatments. And I don't do things or recommend skincare to my patients that I haven't personally used. So I think that's always kind of a good philosophy to have. Okay. So I talked, a, like we touched a little on the skin first approach, but I want to talk on that a little bit more. So when you're in our office for a skin consultation, um, we're looking at a variety of factors, right? At a lot of other offices, volume loss is the first thing we think about. Um, and while volume loss is really, really important, right? We know that you lose fat as you age in your skin. We know that fat pads shift and change because gravity is nobody's friend ever. Um, and we know that bone changes as we age. So what happens is the orb 
orbital rim will actually, you'll lose bone around your orbital rim. So it becomes a little bit wider. Your cheekbones become a little bit less pronounced. All of these things are normal facets of aging. That's normally where patients go to first. In our office, and what I encourage my patients to think about is some other things that you may not be considering and might want to consider even before that. And that's things like tone and texture, which we're going to talk a lot about today, and clarity. So clarity of the skin is the way your skin bounces light off of it. Um, a lot of people think of this as being oily or shiny or yucky, but it's not. Babies have perfect skin because there's no browns or reds to be able to absorb light. And light gets, light gets reflected off in a very even manner. They actually did a study where they looked at, um, they showed photos to a group of individuals and they had them guess the age of the person in the photos. They took the exact same photos and they put a little bit of hyperpigmentation into the photo. So a few dark spots, it wasn't even crazy hyperpigmentation. And on average, onlookers guessed seven years older in the photos, seven years with just a little bit of dark spots. It really plays a huge role. And we're gonna talk about browns and reds. We're gonna talk about hyperpigmentation. Um, but stuff like that plays a big role. Clarity is also that rough, dull texture of your skin, right? Where your skin just doesn't have a lot of vitality. It's not very bright. It's not very, it's, it's just not glowing the way that we want it to. And clarity plays a big role in that. So the next thing we're going to look at, which we're going to talk a lot about today is tone and texture. So tone and texture is really going to be the structure of your skin, right? It's going to be fine lines and wrinkles. It's going to be collagen and elastin. It's going to be, um, are you having static wrinkles, right? Which is where they're, they're wrinkles at rest, or are they um, dynamic wrinkles, which are wrinkles with movement? Um, with tone and texture, you really want to pay attention to the scaffold of the skin. What's the actual structure, right? Um, tone and texture can also, things like Botox can play a huge role in tone and texture as well, because we are a, changing the way that the skin moves, which is awesome, changing the way the muscle movement. But really, we want to think about the actual um, structure of the skin. I use the analogy of a piece of paper, right? So if you take a piece of paper and you fold it, and you fold it lightly, right? And then you uncrease it you can probably get most of the creases out of that skin, right? Um, the structure is still there. The paper is still normal, okay? What about if you take that same piece of paper, you fold it again? Maybe you fold it a little bit harder. Then you smooth it out again. Structure is still there. You might have a line that stays in the paper, but it's not going to be too, too bad. What if you take that paper and you crease it right down the center, right? When you unfold it, that, that line is staying, right? So oftentimes those, di those um, sorry, static wrinkles, those wrinkles that stay in your skin have to do with the structure of the actual skin. It has to do with that same thing with the paper. The structure of the paper is, um, is changed and that's why the wrinkle stays. Same thing with your skin. So collagen and elastin play a huge role in that. Then we're looking at vitality. So vitality, what I mean by vitality is internal. Um, these are things like hormones and nutrition, right? And they play a huge role. We're going to talk about these, but I see a lot of patients in my office where the internal is not addressed, right? So acne is a great example of this, where I'll get patients where, um, two things actually, I'll get patients where I get them from other like very holistic practitioners that have only done the internal treatments, they've only done the dietary changes, um, and they're not getting results because they haven't changed their skincare. And then I get patients from the very traditional old school dermatologists that aren't really up on the research when it comes to um, the internal perspective of diet showing up on your skin, which we know to be the case. Um, and again, all they're doing is changing skincare. They're not getting results. So you have to look at the internal perspective as well. So hormones and nutrition. And then the last thing is inflammation. Inflammation is a huge contributor to aging. We're going to talk about this a little bit with UV damage um, and photo damage, which causes a ton of inflammation in the skin. We also think about inflammation with things like cystic acne, and we think about it with rosacea, and we think about it with eczema and rashes. Um, and it really plays a huge role in the way that your skin ages. When you're in my office, I'm looking at all of these things because really just pinpointing one aspect is not going to get you the kind of care where you're balancing those long-term results, right, with the benefit that you're looking for. And that's, that's, that's how we get patients um, to be happy long-term with their skin. So let's talk about aging. So when we're looking at aging, um, looking at the skin, if we look at the at the picture on the left, 
um, this is kind of considered normal skin, right? So there's three components to your skin. There's the epidermis, the dermis, and then the hypodermis. So the epidermis is the upper layer of your skin. This is where browns and reds live, okay? This is what we think about when we think about skin cell turnover and the way that our skin becomes um, dull and lifeless and uh, what happens when we exfoliate, right? We're exfoliating off the upper layer of the epidermis, which leaves brighter, newer skin. Um, the dermis is really where we're thinking about collagen and elastin and hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid is your, um, is an important aspect for water in the skin for hydration. Hyaluronic acid holds up to a thousand times its weight in water. It's very important for hydration. Um, elastin gives your skin that bounce, right? That elastic quality to it. And then collagen is really the scaffold of the skin. It's really what gives its skin its structure. It's what gives its skin its tone and its tightness and its firmness, okay? And then the hypodermis. So the hypodermis is underneath all this. It's your fat pad. Um, like I said earlier, you do decrease fat as you age um, and fat shifts because gravity, nobody likes it. I don't know anybody who likes gravity and it's not very nice on our skin. And so we have to pay attention to the fact that those things change. So let's talk about aging. Um, there's two things to think about when we think about aging skin. We think about normal aging skin and then we think about photo damaged skin. So with normal aging skin, what we notice is we notice a decrease in collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid, okay? An increase in fine lines and dryness. So skin becomes really dry as it ages. It has a lot more transepithelial water loss, so it doesn't hold its hydration quite as well. Um, and then we notice that the epidermis thins. The epidermis thins and it kind of, it, it models a little bit. So you can see the changes in the roughness of the texture, right? Um, but the most important thing is that it thins. That's why a lot of people with aged skin, you'll see that kind of frail, easily broken, easily damaged skin. What's interesting is that in patients with UV damage to their skin, it's actually different. So they have an increase, a decrease in collagen, decrease elastin, decrease in hyaluronic acid. So that's the same, a decrease in, um, in overall hydration, right? But we actually find that the epidermis thickens. So they end up with this discoloration, this thick epidermis, this super rough texture to their skin. And it is actually really, really different. So we need to think of those two things. I mean, the same, but but we need to consider those things when we're looking at the skin. Um, that's why, and we're gonna to touch on this a little in hormones, but that's why UV damage is the number one thing that you can do today to affect your skin long-term. Um, and it's never too late to start. The earlier, the better, but it's never too late to start. So let's talk about collagen production. So really this webinar is going to end up being a webinar of a series, right? Because I already went through a ton of factors in the skin and to go through all of those in one webinar, you would be here with me all day. Um, and as much as I know you're excited to be here, I don't think I want to talk for that long either. So we're going to do this in a series. So things like discoloration, we'll talk about chemical peels, we'll talk about um, lightening agents, we'll talk about all of those things, but in separate webinars. Today, we're going to focus on collagen. So collagen production really happens in the dermis. And I did mention this earlier, but that's really, really important for when we're thinking about treatments. We want to think about um, who is, we want to think about where we're doing our treatment. So the dermis is where we're creating collagen. So although this, this document, this um, photo is a really good photo, it's not super duper duper accurate. Um, the most of the collagen production that happens is actually deep in the dermis. You want to get deep, deep in the dermis and you want to affect those cells called fibroblasts. So you can see that there. So fibroblasts build collagen. That's what they do. They stimulate collagen production. Um, and as we age, we look at fibroblast collagen production, and then we look at the degradation of collagen production through um, something called a matrix metalloproteinase or an MMP. What we know is that fibroblast activity, so collagen production decreases as we age, and MMP degradation of collagen or the breakdown of collagen increases as we age. Well, lucky us, right? So what we find is that after the age of 25, we lose about 1% of collagen per year. Um, and that can be greatly affected by some of the things that we do. So some of the things we take internally, hormone production, which we'll talk about, um, and then things like UV damage, which we kind of touched on. 
So the other thing that's important to think about with collagen is that there's a lots and lots and lots of different types of collagen in the body. And the type of collagen that your treatment induces matters. So <clears throat> when we're thinking about collagen, collagen type one is the one that we really, really want to think about. So collagen type one is most prevalent, 90% of your collagen. It's prevalent in skin, hair, bones, cartilage. Um, and nails, um, we lose a lot of collagen type one as we age. So this is really those, those matrix metalloproteinases are chomping down on our collagen type one and getting rid of it as we age, unfortunately. Um, collagen type two is more in your joints and cartilage. So more related to joint health. <clears throat> Collagen type three has a more fibrotic structure to it. And what's important with collagen type three, it's got a lot of tensile strength, which is awesome. Um, but as we age, collagen type one is broken down pretty readily by MMPs and collagen type three, the density actually stays a little bit higher. So our ratio of collagen three to collagen one in the skin actually changes favoring collagen three, which is not exactly what we'd want. Um, and then there's also collagen type seven. So collagen type seven has been indicated in the um, in maintaining the connection between the epidermal and dermal junction um, and the integrity of the skin. So when we're doing treatments, we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but when we're doing treatments, you want treatments that are gonna stimulate normal collagen production, right? What happens when we have an increase in collagen type three is collagen type three is more disorganized. So it doesn't sit quite right. So when we make collagen molecules, we make these strands and they're supposed to kind of stack on top of one another, okay? Um, what can happen as we age is it, that becomes a lot more disorganized and the skin structure and texture is different. So we want to make sure that we're encouraging those kind of normal collagen production, okay? <clears throat> oh. There we go. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is why all of the sudden women will notice such a change in their skin, right? So we know that we are decreasing collagen by about 1% per year, and that adds up over time. So it's kind of like that slow boil, right? Where all of the sudden you wake up one day and you're like, oh, what the heck just happened? And it's that, it's that accumulation over time. However, Hormones play a huge role in this. So um, what we know is that research shows that women lose on average about 30% of their collagen in the first five years post-menopause. That's a big number, right? Um, we went from 1% per year to 30% in the first five years post-menopause. Um, that's because estrogen, testosterone, and DHEA play a huge role in um, collagen production, especially estrogen. So um, estrogen has been shown to increase collagen production, increase elastin production, um, to increase vasogenesis, so increase um, the blood flow to the skin, creating more radiant skin, more nutrient, more um, nutrient-rich skin, right? Um, <clears throat> And then it also has been shown to thicken that, that um, epidermis so that if we're having normal aging, right, where the epidermis is thinning, estrogen helps with that. Testosterone, on the other hand, so estrogen, the other thing that's interesting with estrogen is if we think about it, we take it from the skin perspective, kind of to like the bone perspective, um, your bone remodeling is still the remodeling, remodeling of collagen. And we know that in the first five years post-menopause, um, women have a great risk of developing osteoporosis. It's the same thing, right? And estrogen we know helps with that the same way it helps with the skin. Um, testosterone, on the other hand, testosterone does help with collagen production. It has not been shown to help as much with, um, with elastin and it has not been shown to help as much with the vaso, the vascular changes in the skin. Um, DHEA, so there are a lot of interesting research studies on DHEA in terms of helping with skin quality. So patients find that uh, there's, there's research studies indicating that DHEA helps with collagen production. Um, but can also help with fine lines and wrinkles, helps with skin hydration, um, and also Consequently, it helps with bone density um, because, again, it's the same kind of 
uh, mechanism. Um, DHA is actually a precursor hormone to testosterone, both testosterone and estrogen. So that makes sense. Um, what's most interesting now is that while hormones play a huge role in collagen production, um, in aged, in photo aged skin, estrogen has actually been shown to have no benefit. Um, and that's because, or, or I should say a greatly decreased benefit. Um, and that's because the photo aging is a completely different process. So that's why that is one of the most important things that we can do. Um, because then our hormone production really does make a huge difference, right? The next thing I get asked about a lot is nutrients for healthy skin. So this is a big topic. Um, when we're thinking about macronutrition, right? The, one of the more important things to think about is gonna be protein. We think about protein for both healthy hair and healthy skin production, you need normal amounts of amino acids. Um, so that's a good place to start. When we think about other nutrients for healthy skin, omega-3s are really important. So when we think about omega-3s, we're not thinking about a 369. A 369 supplement is not, it's, it's not helpful. It's not gonna be good. Um, you get a lot of omega-6s and 9s probably in your diet. Omega-3s are your most anti-inflammatory. All of your cells in your body, the lipid layer is made up of fats. And when we give healthy anti-inflammatory fats like omega-3s, our cells work better. On top of that, omega-3s help with um, skin hydration, and they've been shown to help with um, limiting the breakdown of collagen, all things that we want right? On top of that is it, it's one of the most anti-inflammatory things that you can take. Um, and reducing inflammation in the skin is really, really important. The next nutrient we think about for skin is going to be vitamin C. So vitamin C, if we think about scurvy, right, way back when on ships, um, when we think about scurvy, what people were suffering from when they suffered from scurvy was um, the, a decrease in skin integrity, right? They were losing their teeth. They were losing their cartilage. Um, and all of that has to do with collagen production. So vitamin C is necessary for healthy collagen production. If you don't have vitamin C, you can't make healthy collagen. That's why with scurvy, your first symptoms are always going to be cartilage based, right? Um, cartilage and skin based because your body's just can't create them. The other thing with vitamin C that's really important, which we're going to talk about, and we're going to touch on later topically, we're going to talk on now, um, and in a couple minutes is its antioxidant capacity. So when we think about UV damage to the skin, right? UV damage to the skin is pro-oxidant. So it creates a lot of inflammation, a lot of pro-oxidant damage, and we want antioxidants to help with that. Um, when we think about UV damage to the skin, there's three things to think about. Um, so there's UVB, which is burning. It's easy to know if we got burnt, right? Um, because we're out in the sun and we know. Um, UVA, which is aging. And then you, and then blue light, which is something really to think about as we're all on Zoom all day long. Um, so what, there's a, a very famous photo of a trucker um, and they looked at a split face study. Um, and basically from the side that was most often closest to the window, there was a stark difference. If you look it up, there's a stark difference between side to side in years. Like you would guess that he's 15 years older on one side than the other. That's due to UVA. UVA, you get UVA damage on a cloudy day. You get it through your windows. You get it pretty much all the time if the sun is out. Um, so when we're looking for protection, um, vitamin C helps with some of that anti antioxidant protection to help with the skin. Um, it's really important with sunscreen, which we'll touch on later. Copper. So copper is really important. So we talked about the modeling of collagen and how we stack collagen molecules. <clears throat> what we put between them, what the body cross links your collagen with is copper. And so copper is really important for healthy skin. What's important to think about with copper is that copper and zinc, which you'll see a couple lines down, is they use the same receptor sites. So zinc is really important when we think about skin um, integrity in terms of kind of um, infection and skin integrity. Um, we use it a lot in acne patients or in patients whose skin's just like wound healing, things that are not healing very well. Um, because zinc and copper use the same receptor sites, especially like this year, right? 
people who are on zinc for a long period of time can throw off their copper. And that can play a big role in whether or not you're able to build and model normal collagen. So zinc is not something you want to be on super long term. Um, and it's something that really, really needs to be balanced. Other antioxidants. So other antioxidants, getting in your green leafy vegetables, getting in your blueberries, getting in your, um, your red fruits, right? Getting in lutein, um, all are really, really important skin antioxidants. Again, your skin gets a lot of pro-inflammatory assault, right? So to speak throughout the day. So sun, um, UVA, UVB damage, uh, blue light, pollution, all of those things have been shown to cause a, a stark increase in um, inflammation and, and oxidative stress in the skin. Antioxidants are going to play a huge role in getting rid of that. <clears throat> and then a question I get a lot is on collagen supplementation. So is it beneficial, right? And you're going to hear back and forth on this. Um, I actually take collagen every single day. So I think collagen is really helpful. Here's what you get from collagen. A lot of patients think that you get collagen and it's just going to go directly to your skin and that's it. It's really not. Um, it's going to go in, it's going to be degraded into its amino acids like anything else would be, any other protein. But what you're getting is the amino acids that would be in collagen. So that's proline and glycine. And if your body has enough building blocks of something, right, in theory, it will be able to do its secondary type functions like building skin and building healthy hair if it has an ample source of those amino acids. So that's where collagen comes in really, really handy. The research on collagen, there's a couple things to think about. So there's smaller studies and they're generally funded by the industry, which we always kind of put a little bit of a grain of salt on. However, the studies do show a benefit in fine lines and wrinkles, a benefit in elasticity, um, and a benefit in skin hydration. So that is fantastic. It's a really easy way to get in some great amino acids as well. Um, so I do recommend collagen. Here's the thing with collagen. You are taking animal cartilage and there's nothing wrong with that at all, but that means that we need to take a really, really good source. Um, there are studies on some products that have been contaminated with mercury and lead, and we don't want that. What we want is a really, really clean source of collagen. So, so what you purchase matters. So the question becomes, we've talked about all of these things with collagen production. We've talked about how your skin makes collagen. We've talked about some of the, some of the um, nutritional and hormonal components of collagen. Can we fix it, right? So we're degrading collagen at every point in time. We're always building collagen and degrading collagen. And the question becomes, what's our balance? Are we balanced more towards getting rid of our collagen or balanced more towards building our collagen? And we can fix it. Yay, that's what I like to hear, right? So... The key to fixing collagen and to building collagen is controlled injury. And I put controlled in caps locks and I put it in caps locks for a reason. So the key to everything with this is to create just enough injury to your skin that your fibroblasts go, oh man, I need to fix that, right? But we don't want them to go crazy and scar. So the example that I use for my patients is cutting open your hand with a kitchen knife, right? Um, your body's gonna fill that wound with collagen. It's gonna do that really, really effectively, but it's probably gonna fill it with scar tissue. So what we want is we want to create just enough injury to create collagen, but not enough to scar. And there are a few different components that we think about to do this. So first of all, we think about um, the type of injury created. We think about the depth of injury created, which is really important. And then we think about how much injury can we make um, without causing scarring. And then we think about how can we make this better, right? So these are kind of what we're going to talk about. So <clears throat> microneedling is hands down, microneedling and RF microneedling are my favorite, 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 favorite treatments for this. Um, there are other treatments that will create collagen, right? Like we know that chemical peels, a really deep chemical peel is going to create collagen, but that's going to go through right through your epidermis. I love chemical peels for hyperpigmentation and the increase in collagen is a great benefit. They're not my treatment that I would go to if I wanted just collagen production. Um, Lasers also do help with collagen production. Again, laser therapy goes through the epidermis and into the dermis. The other thing that we found with lasers is that lasers, um, histologically, right, when we study it, lasers tend to create more of a fibrotic collagen production. 
more closer to scar tissue. So oftentimes I get questions on my patients, like I'll give them a treatment plan and patients will look at me kind of scared and they'll say, well, I'm not going to get that weird skin that people get, right? And what they're talking about is that waxy look. So you can tell if somebody's overdone their skin. You can tell if somebody's over lasered their skin because they end up with this waxy texture and it looks really weird. Um, that is an increase in fibrosis. That's an increase in that closer to scar tissue collagen that we don't necessarily want. So lasers can be really, 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 really helpful for like browns and reds and things like that. When it comes to collagen production though, micro needling creates a more um, fetal collagen production. So it creates collagen that's normal density and lays normally. So it's not the disorganized collagen like we talked about earlier. Um, so we talked a little bit about what kind of injury, right? That matters. Um, you want the needles to penetrate the skin at 90 degrees. Okay. This is really a big difference between this and like at home dermal rolling, which I'm not a fan of for a many, 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 many reasons. But one of the reasons why I don't like dermal rolling is first of all, it doesn't go deep enough. It's only generally a 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is only going to be in your epidermis. So while it's going to help with skin cell turnover, it's going to brighten maybe the skin and help like smooth out rough texture and things like that. It's not going to build collagen the way you think it is. Um, the other thing to think about is that it goes in at a 45 degree angle. It's like a wheel, right? So it's going in at a 45 degree angle that causes more tearing in the skin. We don't want to tear the skin. We want to puncture. Wound. We want it to go right down and right out. Okay. Um, so that's the first thing. The second thing is the depth. I touched on this a little bit earlier, but Collagen production happens in the lower layers of your dermis. You need to go deep to get good collagen production. Um, this is the difference between going for a medical grade treatment and going for treatment with an esthetician. Estheticians live in the epidermis. That's where the jurisdiction is. Um, you really want to get into the lower layers of the dermis. That's where you get the most benefit if you're looking for that as your treatment goal. Um, that matters. So sometimes patients haven't gotten super benefit from microneedling and sometimes it's a depth issue. The third thing we want to think about is how much injury can we create? So when we're talking about microneedling, there's kind of two types of microneedling. There's the original microneedling, which is just a pen with 12 needles on the end of it. And the needles go down, they're um, automatically kind of inserted into the skin and you glide it over the skin. That is great. For it is really great for collagen production. Um, it's really great for texture changes of the skin, like the orange peely kind of skin that patients get <clears throat> for fine lines and wrinkles, for um, helping kind of just with general skin tone. It's not as good at helping skin laxity or tightening the skin. If we want to tighten the skin, we want to create a lot more injury. So the key is creating injury in the dermis, not the epidermis, okay? So the way we do that is with radio frequency microneedling. Radio frequency microneedling basically has the needles. This is actually a photo of radio frequency microneedling. So it is an automatic injection. You press the button and the needles go out, they inject into the skin and the very tip of the needle releases radio frequency microneedling radio frequency energy. The rest of the needle is insulated. That's really, 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 really important. Um, that insulated needle means that you get the trauma through the epidermis, which helps with um, the rough texture, helps with skin cell turnover, will help to kind of brighten the epidermis, help with um, your product penetration, right? It's gonna help with all of those things, but the actual collagen production is helping, happening deep in the dermis, which is where the radio frequency energy comes out. The heat energy being so low, allows us to um, minimize our risk for things like hyperpigmentation and hypopigmentation, right? And allows us to use it on more skin types, which is awesome. Um, radio frequency microneedling is my go-to treatment for if tightening is one of our main kind of benefits that we're looking for. Then we're gonna talk about additions of how do we make our treatments better, right? So this is where we get to things like PRP and growth factor. Um, so PRP is platelet-rich plasma. Um, with platelet-rich plasma, what we do is we take your platelets, well, we take your blood, we spin it down and we get your platelets. Platelets release growth factor and growth factor heals things, basically. In the skin, growth factor, PRP has been shown to increase collagen production, um, to help with hyperpigmentation. Um, and also it helps with, 
the vasogenesis and blood flow to the skin. So creating more of that radiant glow. Um, they actually did a split face study where they did a biopsy before and then a biopsy after on both sides of the face. And they did some multiple patients. So on one side, they did micro injections of saline. So basically think micro needling with water and they found on biopsy a 46% increase in collagen production. Well, awesome. That means that the treatments that we're talking about really do build collagen in the skin, which is what our main goal is. Um, perfect. On the other side, they did micro injections with PRP. On the PRP side, they found an 89.5% increase in collagen production. That's a huge change. That means that PRP can more than double the efficacy of your treatment. Um, multiple research studies have found that PRP, the benefits of PRP, people um, are more satisfied with their treatments, um, show collagen production, and they also show help uh, assistance with hyperpigmentation. Um, the kind of PRP that you do matters. So the drawing enough blood um, to actually get the amount of platelets that we're looking for matters. And a lot of clinics in the aesthetics field, that's what I find, they're just not drawing enough blood. So if you're going in and they're drawing these like little tiny tubes of blood, um, they're not enough. You're not getting enough to, to concentrate down PRP. Most of the time for us, we're drawing these big syringes like this, right? And we're drawing like one or two of them to concentrate that down to seven mils of platelets. So that's 60 mils of blood, 60 to 120 mils of blood for seven mils of platelets. So that's important. Okay, so let's just run through a couple treatments. Um, so what's most important is that my patients really, really, really love microneedling. Um, I have patients who have come in that have said, many, many patients that come in that say that this is the best treatment that they've tried on their skin. So this treatment was, this was after one series. Um, and you can see massive improvements in the texture of her skin, improvements in the, um, the tone of her skin under her eyes. Her mouth is starting to improve, which was her main area of concern. So we're still, we're gonna do another treatment series. And you can see a major improvement in the laxity around her ear. Um, that is really, really important because if you think about the way, it's all about the way the skin drapes, right? So if we can tighten skin back here, everything sits better. Then this was our microneedling with PR, uh, one of our many microneedling with PRP patients with chemical peel. Her main concern was this orange peel on her chin, right? That orange peel skin on her chin and increase in pores and increase in texture she just didn't like. Um, I mean, this photo just speaks for itself. She got amazing results with the microneedling with PRP chemical peel combo. So we didn't do them together. We actually did them separate, but that was her treatment plan. Um, she actually sent me in one of her friends for uh, injections, for neurotoxin injections. And this friend, um, when she, she had a big birthday coming up and she said to me, I wanna do something for myself for my big birthday. Um, I'm thinking injection, where would you inject my face? Like with filler. And I assessed her and I said, look, if I was to inject your face, this is what I would do. But also, um, I think that you would benefit the most from treating the texture changes in your skin. And I pointed them out and she looked at me and she said, honestly, that's bugged me for a really long time. And she said, I've tried so many treatments that just haven't really helped that much. What would you recommend? So I recommended microneedling with PRP to her. <clears throat> and she was in, she's done a series of three and she was in just the other day to get her injections before she left um, to go out East for the summer. And she was telling me how excited she is to come back in September because the microneedling with PRP is the best thing that she's done on her skin. Um, and those are her words. So she's thrilled to come back in September so that we can pick that back up again. Um, it really does make a huge difference in patient skin. So now we've gone through kind of the, what's going on, the hormones, the treatments, right? But you might be asking yourself, well, what the heck can I do right now? Right? I want something right now. So we're going to go through the right now. Um, I touched on this earlier. I am the world's biggest snob when it comes to skincare. And that's not necessarily a cost thing, right? Like I am not, I mean, there's a lot of great brands like Skin Medica and stuff like that where I'm not impressed with their products. Their products are really expensive. I'm not impressed with it. With me, I want a medical grade product. I want my product to work and I want my patients to come back and say, wow, that made a difference on my skin. And so that's what I strive for in my practice. Um, our own line. So I'm gonna go through a couple of products from our own line. Um, I actually 
created this line and brought it in because I couldn't find a sunscreen that I liked. So we talked a little bit about sunscreen um, being so important for your skin, right? For UVB, UVA, and um, the blue light. And I wanted physical only because zinc oxide is what is shown to help with all three of those things the best. Zinc oxide is actually what, should, what helps with UVA the best. Um, I don't want to use chemical disruptors on my face because they're all endocrine disruptors and I like to keep my hormones, um, you know, healthy. And I want it to sit well on my skin. So I found that I was telling my patients to use sunscreen on their face, but I wasn't actually doing it every day. And that wasn't really working for me. So I needed to find a sunscreen that we loved. And we went and formulated one. Um, this is a mineral defense. So it's physical blocker only. Um, it is zinc and titanium oxide. It has a little bit of hyaluronic acid. So it goes on smooth and it is a fan- favorite. Um, these are just some of the testimonials for this particular product. So I posted both of these on Instagram and I got multiple, multiple, um, <clears throat> messages afterwards from my patients saying, Oh my God, I love this product so much. Like, yes, this is so true. I love these products so much. Um, this sunscreen is amazing. I've actually had patients send in their friends to tell me how much they love their sunscreen. Um, this is a product you want to actually put on your face. You don't have to, but you want to. Um, and since I formulated it, I haven't missed a day. So that, that is, uh, if there was one product, one thing that I would recommend, it would be getting a sunscreen you want to use every single day on your skin. Um, that is going to make a huge difference long-term. The next one I'm going to talk about is our Vibrant C. So this is actually a really well formulated product for collagen production specifically. So I did a whole article on this. And if you haven't read it yet, um, I think it's up on our blog, but also you can email Olivia or message Olivia and Olivia will send it to you. So um, vitamin C is really, really, really hard to formulate, right? So it doesn't get deep into the dermis. It has to be at specific pHs. It's really finicky. It's easily degraded. It has a whole bunch of problems with it. That's why your um, type of vitamin C matters. So like a cheap vitamin C, don't waste your money. It's not working. Um, you want a second generation vitamin C or this, this, this vitamin C specifically is actually cream based um, because it's tetrahexyl decalascorbate. And tetrahexyl decalascorbate has been shown to penetrate the dermis better. So it actually gets deeper into the skin. It penetrates the dermis, which allows it to create more collagen production because of... Um, it's, it's actually getting to where collagen production is made. Other benefits of vitamin C, vitamin C brightens the skin. Um, it helps with, um, it's a tyrosinase, mild tyrosinase inhibitor, and it's an antioxidant. So it's going to help with hyperpigmentation. So this is a great product for both collagen production and hyperpigmentation. Um, I usually recommend this as a morning product. So vitamin C underneath your sunscreen, right? So vitamin C first, then sunscreen um, actually has been shown to help increase the benefits of your sunscreen because it decreases the um, pro-oxidation that happens with the sun. The next one is a super heavy hitter. So this is our restorative cream. This is actually a human derived growth factor cream. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about the OG skincare in terms of collagen production in a second. Um, but the restorative cream is really the big science, right? right now, right? And what we find, so this is, we talked about growth factors a little bit with PRP. <clears throat> we talked about growth factors ability to increase collagen production, to increase um, blood flow in the skin, which just kind of increases uh, radiance um, and increases skin nourishment. Um, this particular product has been shown to help with increased collagen production. It helps with uh, fine lines and wrinkles based on study. Um, and it again is a tyrosinase inhibitor. So it's going to help with dark spots as well. So it really is hitting the skin in a very like trifecta kind of way. Um, it's actually from human derived growth factors. So it's from skin, skin cells and we're collecting the growth factor from skin cells. That's really important because then we know that they're the right kind of growth factors that we would want for the skin to work. Um, what I love about this product is a couple things. So I like that it is a little bit more affordable than some of the other products. Um, Allergan has a product that's very expensive and honestly smells terrible. And um, so this is a more affordable, really great option that patients love. Um, and it's 
it goes on really well. It goes on smooth. It has added antioxidants to it. It's a great, great product. Now, so we talked about kind of like the, the new science, right? We talked about the big guns right now. Um, let's talk about the OG. So the OG product when it comes to collagen production is going to be tretinone. And you'll notice that this slide says retinol, but I'm talking about tretinone. So when it comes to uh, products, tretinone is the prescription strength retinol. There's a couple issues kind of with tretinone. So the research on tretinone and retinol is amazing. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, but with tretinone, there's a couple things to think about. Tretinone is really strong and retinol is really, really irritating to the skin. Tretinone is really irritating to the skin. So patients find sometimes their biggest issue with adding in a retinol is actually the irritation that comes with adding it in. So we're going to talk about ways to combat that a little bit. Um, the other thing with tretinone is that it's prescription strength, which means that the base that it's put in is prescription. Um, prescription bases are meant for delivery of prescription, right? They're not meant for luxury. They're not meant for hydration. They're not meant for some of the things that you get with a more, um, pharmaceutical grade skincare approach. So this retinol, there's a few things that we love, 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 love about it. So first of all, the base is really luxurious. It goes on smooth and light. It is hydrating, but it's not sticky and it absorbs quickly. Um, we have three strengths. So 0 0.25, a 0.5 and a one, which means that we can ease our way into using our retinols. So a lot less irritation and patients are a lot more compliant. They like it better with that. So the research on retinol, um, it shows that it increases the epithelium. Um, it increases collagen production, increases elastin production, helps with fine lines and wrinkles, helps with skin cell turnover. And actually interestingly, the research on tretinone shows that it helps with precancerous skin lesions. So no, I didn't say cancerous skin lesions, um, but precancerous skin lesions because it helps with that skin cell turnover. Um, patients find that their skin on retinol is brighter. It's more even, it has a better complexion. And over time, you're going to notice a decrease in fine lines and wrinkles. This is one of the products that like, well, actually all of the products that I mentioned, you will notice a difference in your skin, like a noticeable difference. Retinol over time, you will notice a difference. Um, problems with retinol are going to be the irritation, right? So ways to combat the irritation <clears throat> are twofold. You can do it less times per month or per week. So normally I recommend starting with the 0.25 if you've never done retinol before and doing it a couple times a week and then easing your way in. Um, the other thing that, that research actually shows right now is that you can put a cream underneath your retinol. So the one that we recommend is our Revivify Recovery Cream. It's a ceramide cream. It's going to help with the, um, it's going to help with transepithelial water loss and it helps to um, rejuvenate the skin well still allowing that retinol to penetrate. So research used to say that you should mix the two together. <clears throat> then we found that that didn't lead to a very even distribution of retinol on the skin. So now they're finding that if you're going to do that, you want to put your cream on first, right? And then you want to put your retinol over top so that it's a very even distribution. Um, and then work your way into retinol. Um, retinol is a fantastic addition. And this base is very hydrating, smooth, does a great job, but isn't, it isn't irritating to the skin um, as much as other retinols can be. Okay, so now I'm going to open it up for questions. Does anybody have any questions on the information that we went over today? Yes, if you are thinking of your questions, you can type them down into the chat. We will definitely be sure to answer them for you. Um, I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much, Dr. Alex, for hosting this webinar. Um, this was so informative and honestly, super refreshing to hear um, your different approach to aesthetics and skin health. Um, and thank you so much to everyone for joining us today. I really hope you learned something new about building collagen and how um, a skin forward approach can really just make a huge difference in the treatments you receive. Um, so again, if you have questions, please type them into the chat. Um, we can answer them for you at the end here.
I also want to just point out um, Dr. Alex has a YouTube channel and she releases her new videos every week on Sundays. So if you search for her name, Dr. Alexandra Mayer on YouTube, you can find her videos. Um, her YouTube channel is full of resources on women's hormones, um, boosting your physical and mental health and all things skincare as well. So I highly recommend checking out her channel and subscribing so you don't miss out on her future videos. Um, also, we will be uploading this webinar to our Ethos YouTube channel. So if you would like to rewatch this um, video or share it with a friend, you can find it there. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and put the information in the chat here so you guys have access to all of that. Um, and then one last thing before we wrap up this webinar, um, at the beginning, I had mentioned that you can schedule an aesthetics consultation with Dr. Alexandra Mayer. Um, this is the ideal first step um, for getting your specific skincare questions answered um, and getting started on a skin forward treatment plan for your personal aesthetic goals. So an aesthetics consult um, is a 45 minute appointment and is normally $85, um, but we will give you a 50% discount um, for your aesthetics consultation with Dr. Alex if you go ahead and call us and schedule within this next week. And if you are looking to um, try out any of the skincare products we mentioned today, if you give our office a call and order by this afternoon, we'll give you a 10% discount on that as well. So I highly recommend taking advantage of all of these um, deals that we have. And I'll go ahead and leave the phone number for our office in the chat. So you can give us a call. Um, again, if you guys have any additional questions um, or would like to purchase any skincare from our Ethos line, you can give us um, a call and either me or Lindsay will help you out with that. So thank you again so much for joining us this afternoon and I hope you'll have a wonderful weekend. We look forward to connecting with you soon. So thank you. Thank you guys so much for joining um, and we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar.